And for this video, we will continue the Profrops quiz for the driving exam in Japan. Okay, so if you haven't watched the previous video about the practice exam, I've answered there the question from first question to the 25th question. And this is the continuation. So we will proceed to the 26th question of the exam. Okay, so are you ready guys? Hi guys, this is Alan. Welcome back to this channel, Gaijin World. Let's go and try to answer the quiz. Question number 26. Breaking on a snowy or icy road may cause sleeping and is dangerous. So it is advisable to use engine braking and then apply the foot brake. What do you think guys? So once we answer this question, we will see the answer right away. What do you think about this question? So is it advisable to use the engine braking and then apply the foot brake? during the snowy or during the winter or there's an icy road on your way so maybe my answer here is true okay let's see if it's correct submit answer yes correct so here's the feedback reduce speed sufficiently using engine braking and apply the brakes with several separate presses pumping the brake pedal i've been doing this even it's not winter i've been doing this if i am driving a car and uh, i need to slow down i am applying the brake and then pressing the brake pedal in a succession just to reduce the speed and to avoid colliding and to give notice behind the vehicles on my back okay so i can uh, give them a signal for this question the answer is true so let's proceed to the next one question number 27 sudden braking on two wheel vehicle causes the wheels to lock stopping wheel motion and skid sideways okay sudden braking on two wheel vehicle causes the wheels to lock stopping wheel motion and skid sideways this question is applicable to motorcycles because it's a two wheel vehicle what do you think guys for those who know more about the motorcycle, uh, by the way, the questions on Hanmen and Karimen exam includes motorcycles as well, okay? The moped for this question, okay? So let's try to answer. Okay, sudden braking on a two-wheeled vehicle causes the wheels to lock, stopping wheel motion and skid sideways. What do you think about this, guys? Is it true or false? Hmm, I'm not sure with this one, but to answer it true then submit okay it's correct the feedback sudden braking can cause skidding or vehicle to flip several separate braking operations should be applied if you are running very in a very fast speed and then you suddenly press the brake pedal you might uh, flip so this is very dangerous so make a several separate braking to avoid flipping so let's proceed to the next question question 28 fog drastically reduces visibility so drivers should turn on headlights lights fog lamps or tail lights before visibility gets too low and sound the horn when necessary okay what do you think about this guys what's the answer for that question what do you think so if there's a fog and it's almost a night time it's getting dark you should turn on your headlights and fog lamps or tail lights before the visibility and use the sound horn if necessary okay so is it true or false i think this is true let's try to answer and the answer is correct it's true so the explanation here turning on the lights sound the horn as necessary to make other drivers notice that another vehicle is approaching let's proceed to the next one question 29 okay so it's long okay guys wait but before we answer this question i'll just give you some heads up on the the exam the actual exam like carrymen and honmen at the beginning of the test paper or the the book the manual where all the questions are there i think the first 20 items are very easy okay and it, the, the paragraph or it's almost a sentence only questions are very simple at the beginning of the exam but as you progress the questions begins being more complicated okay it, be it becomes paragraph not just a sentence so please try to practice fast reading okay fast reading because it will take time for you to answer the questions okay so when a police officer is making a hand signal with his her arms held out straight to the sides horizontally on a road without pedestrian crossing or similar situation other than at intersection vehicles facing the police officer must stop one meter before him or her oh Okay, so what do you think about that, guys? That's that the question. Okay, again, when a police officer is making a hand signal, 
Okay, hand signal. I'm a police officer, for example, and I'm using this hand signal to give you instruction if you're the driver in front of me. And I held out my arm straight to the side horizontal like this. On a road without pedestrian crossing or similar situation other than at intersection, vehicles, the police officer must stop one meter before him or her. So is it true or false? What do you think? I think this is true. So let's try to answer it if it's true. And then the answer is... Correct, it's true. So in this case, the stopping position is one meter before the police officer. So if there's no traffic signal and only the police officer, you must stop one meter before the police officer. So let's proceed to the next question. Question number 30. For two-wheeled vehicles, there are three braking methods. Use the handbrake lever, use the brake pedal, and use the engine braking. So what do you think about this question, guys? For two-wheeled vehicles, there are three braking methods. Use the hand brake lever use the brake pedal and use the engine brake so i think this is true okay true kasi ah, <laughs> because in a two-wheeled vehicle there's uh, also a handbrake right so i think this is true let's see if this is true so the answer is correct it's true there are three methods when using a two-wheel vehicle there's a front wheel braking real wheel braking and engine brake okay let's proceed to the next question question number 31 driver should refrain from driving when photochemical smog occurs or it is forecasted due to air pollution hmm i think this is obvious if there's a pollution or if you think that your car is broken not functioning properly i think it's best to go to the car maintenance shop okay a car shop that can uh, check your vehicle and to avoid accidents okay so this is true i think then let's see if it's true okay correct drivers are also responsible for the prevention of traffic pollution okay let's proceed to the next question okay you are driving Driving along at 40 kilometers on a rainy day, what kinds of things you should be careful of? So let's assess first the photograph here or the picture. So it's it's kind of the road is kind of wet. <laughs> There are, I think also there's a children walking on the road in front of my vehicle and then on the left side there's someone is riding a bicycle. So here's the question. The children on the right might move to the center of the road to avoid the puddles. So I'll accelerate and pass the children before they do so. What do you think about the answer to this question true or false i think this is false because it's it's dangerous to just pass by the the children you don't know what children can uh do i mean the, the behavior of the children okay so the answer this is false so let's try to answer it false and the answer is false there's no explanation but it's uh if you can analyze the question here accelerate guys it's dangerous to do that and pass the children before they do so so it's like before you do something observe first okay observe and judge in front of you what they're gonna do so to avoid accidents okay let's proceed to the next question question number 34 Three, you are driving along at 40 kilometers at night and you see a bicycle ahead wobbling. What kinds of things you should be careful of? If I'm gonna analyze the picture here, okay, so at night I can see a man or someone is driving a bike, having a bicycle there and wiggling or wobbling. It's like maybe he's, um, he's kind of drunk. This is the question. I think that the cyclist has noticed my vehicle approaching so I'll continue driving and pass it. Hmm. <laughs> What do you think guys? Is it true or false? What do you think about the question? So are you gonna pass by the one who's driving the vehicle? Are you gonna continue driving and pass the vehicle? Is it true or false? What do you think? Let's try to answer. I think it's false. Okay, false. So let's try to submit the answer if it's false yes false so it's dangerous because uh we don't know what al also the movement of this guy what the guy is thinking so it's better not to do so not to drive and pass him okay so let's move to the next question question number 34 you are driving along at 40 kilometers at night 40 kilometers per hour at night and you see a bicycle ahead uh, wobbling what kinds of things should you be careful of 
I think this is the same. The same picture, the same question, but uh, different. The bicycle is wobbling and might fall. And so I will accelerate in advance to pass it. I think it's the same, right? So it's false. Let's answer false. Question number 33 and 34 are the same. So you got it right. Okay, so next question. Question number 35. On paths for pedestrian use, vehicles with their garages on the roadside or vehicles with special permission are allowed to proceed. In such cases, the driver must slow down and exercise special care regarding pedestrians. What do you think about this question, guys? It's about the pedestrian and when we are talking about the pedestrian, we are talking about the safety of the people around our vehicle. Oh, ouch. Okay, I'm gonna read the questions again. On paths for pedestrian use, you are going towards the pedestrian, okay? Vehicles with garages on the roadside or vehicles with special permission are allowed to proceed. In such cases, driver drivers must slow down and exercise special care regarding pedestrian. So I think this is true. So let's see if the answer is true. Correct. So this is the explanation. Vehicles specifically permitted should slow down and exercise special caution to pedestrians. Okay, question number question number 36. When parking an automatic transmission vehicle on upward as well as downward slopes, the driver must put the gear shift lever into the P position. Okay, guys think about this question okay so it's about how to park okay it's about the parking so when parking an automatic transmission vehicle on an upward okay as well as downward slopes okay so there's the upward and downward slopes the driver must put the gear shift lever into the p position so it's in the park position i think this is true it's a slope so you might also use the handbrake uh, what do you call Yeah, the handbrake. So let's just try to answer it through. And the answer is true. Okay, so this is the explanation, the feedback. When parking an automatic transmission vehicle, put the gear shift lever in the P position regardless of the parking location. Okay, so it's true. Next question. Question number 37. A traffic sign indicating road close is to prohibit the passage of pedestrians to avoid danger. So automobiles may proceed. Okay, what do you think about this question? A traffic sign indicating road close is to prohibit the passage of pedestrians to avoid danger. So automobiles may proceed. I think this is false because it's also road close, deba. Right? When you say road close, it's road, it's close to everyone. Okay, not just pedestrian but also with the mobile. So, let's try to answer this false. And the answer is false. So, this sign is this sign prohibits all types of passage. Therefore, pedestrians, vehicles, and streetcars are not allowed to proceed. Okay, let's proceed to the next question. Question number 38. When there is an obstacle on the road ahead, speed up to reach and pass the obstacle before an oncoming vehicle reaches the same point. Okay, this is this is dangerous <laughs> okay so what do you think about the answer guys when there is an obstacle on the road ahead okay speed up to reach the pass and uh, speed up to reach and pass the obstacle before an oncoming vehicle reaches the same point remember guys if you are on the lane where there's an obstacle ahead of you you must stop and uh, let the other lane to proceed okay so I think this is false let's try to end it false and the answer is false, yes. So the feedback here is vehicles on the side where an obstacle is present must reduce speed or stop before reaching it uh, and give way to oncoming vehicles. Okay, so let's proceed to the next question. Question number 39. Because the visibility ahead is poor near the top of a hill and it is therefore very dangerous, stopping or parking are prohibited at such locations except when it is unavoidable to prevent accidents. So what do you think about, about this question? I'll repeat. Because visibility ahead is poor near the top of a hill and it is therefore very dangerous. Okay, so it's about the visibility on the top of the hill and very dangerous stopping or parking are prohibited prohibited at such location except when it's unavoidable for to prevent accidents. I think this is true. It's a poor visibility on the top of the hill. You don't know what's what is oncoming to you. Okay, so it's gonna be it's gonna be <laughs> you think guys. So I think this is 
true? And the answer is... <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Neither stopping nor parking a vehicle is permitted near the top of a hill. Okay, so next question. And for this video, we will end this video to uh, question number 40. Okay, so question number 40. Being able to walk a two-wheeled vehicle through a full figure eight. Oh no, I think I, I encountered this on my previous exam and my actual exam. Full figure eight is also one of the requirements for selecting an appropriate vehicle to type okay so i'm reaching out this book guys okay please review this book it's very helpful guys there's a lot of uh, stuff here that's very helpful and i'm sure that all the questions will be coming from this book master of your driving and to answer that question if it's if you can walk the the motorcycle or the what they call that if you can walk it the two-wheeled vehicle in a full figure eight then it is uh, appropriate for you so that is true so the answer here is uh, true let's see if it's really true <laughs> so the answer is true this is one of the requirements for selecting a two-wheeled vehicle okay so there you go i hope you like this video if you like this video please comment down below and like this video and um, you have to share this to other people who are taking driver licensure exam here in japan okay so i'm i'm hoping that all the videos that i'm uploading related to this content are helpful to you if if you do so then please comment down below and um just comment so i, I will know even if you already passed the exam please let me know if this is this kind of content is helping you or very helpful and i'm also struggling to speak in english guys <laughs> because there's um, other viewers who are also foreigners here in Japan but not Filipino so they are asking me to speak English so they can also understand what I'm trying to say so here's here are the videos for you guys I hope this will help you pass the exam I'm hoping to help you guys thank you so much for watching and please if you haven't subscribed to this channel please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell and of course the all so you will always be uh, notified if I'm gonna upload new videos, okay? I'm trying to, I'm trying my best to upload new videos every week. So please try to subscribe. And if you already subscribed, thank you so much for always watching our videos, even if it's in Tagalog, <laughs> my native language, okay? So thank you so much. This is Alan. I will see you on our next video. I will continue the ProFrops exam and give you update, okay? Thank you so much. Bye!